data in today's world is the backbone of every sector. This data is organized into data structures which form the storehouse of data. Hey guys, Edureka brings to you a new session on the study of one of these data structures which is Python sets. My name is Vajiha and before I start with the session, let's have a quick look at all that is bundled here for you all. To begin with, let's understand what exactly is a set and when to use this data structure. Following that, I'm going to show you all how to create sets in Python and then we'll perform some operations on sets such as accessing set elements, finding the length of a set, adding and removing elements from it and then some mathematical operations which are union, intersection and difference of sets. Finally, we'll be looking at what are frozen sets and how to create them in Python. So I hope everyone's clear with this. So moving on towards the first topic of this session, which is what is a set? A set is basically a data structure guys, which is a collection of unordered elements. All elements in a set are unique, which means every element is present just once. Now these values can be of any data type, but they are not indexed. And because of this, you cannot perform indexing operations such as slicing on sets. So now that you know what are sets, let's move on and see when to use sets in Python. Sets can be used when the order of data actually does not matter, but the only concern is your data elements need to be unique. So now let's move on to see how to create sets in Python. To create sets in Python, you can use two methods. The first method is to use the curly braces and the second is to use the set constructor. I have a small example where I've created a set A using curly braces and a set B using the set constructor. Now let's move on towards our Jupyter notebook and create some sets in Python. The first thing I'm going to do over here is change the name of my notebook. You can give any name of your choice and rename it. Like I've already told you, you can create sets in two ways. The first to use curly braces and the second to use the set constructor. Let's just create some sets using both these methods. I've created a set A using curly braces and then I've specified some random values to it. You can also notice that all these values are of different data types. After that, I've created a set B using the set constructor. This set constructor has converted a list of values into a set. Hope you're clear with how to create sets. Now let me just show you all how to create an empty set using the set constructor. All you have to do is give some name to your set, say for example C and use the set constructor without passing any values to it and hit run. Now when you print this set, you can see that the set is empty. It has returned an output which is an empty set. So I hope you're clear with how to create sets in Python. Now let me just show y'all what are all the methods you can use along with sets. To do so, you can use the dir method and supply the name of the set as a parameter to it. When I used dir and passed a as a parameter, which is a set that I've already created, it has returned a number of methods as its output. So all these are the methods you can use along with sets. Now let's get back to our presentation and see what are the operations we are going to perform in this session today. First of all, we'll be finding the length of a set and accessing its elements. After that, we'll be adding or updating elements of a set and then removing and deleting elements from it. Following that, we'll perform the mathematical operations that are union, intersection and difference of sets. Now let's move on towards the first operation of this session, which is finding the length of a set. To find the length of a set, you can use the len method. The length of a set is the number of elements that are actually present in that set. And this len function will return an integer value which is equal to the number of elements present in the set. I have a small example where I've created some random set with the name my set and I've passed some values to it. After that, I've used the len function and passed the name of the set as a parameter. Now let's go to our Jupyter notebook and see what happens when I do this. I've already created set A, B and C. I'll just reprint my set A over here so that it's easy for us to refer to it. Now let's find the length of A. When I used len of A, 
it has returned 7 as the output which is equal to the number of elements present in my set a now let's get back to our presentation and see how to access elements of a set since set contain unordered elements you cannot use index values to access its elements but you can loop through it to access the elements of a set i'll just jump on to my jupyter notebook and show you all how to access set elements i'll reprint my sets a and b over here I've used the for loop to access the elements of set A. All I have done is for every element present in A, print that element. And as you can see in the output, all the elements present in A have been returned one after the other. Now let's get back to our presentation and see how to add elements to a set. To add elements to a set, you can use either the add method or the update method. Now this add method will allow you to add a single element to your set. But the update method will allow you to add a list of values to your set. I'm going to be showing you all how to use both these methods in this session. So here is my Jupyter notebook. When I use the update method, I've passed a list of values to be added to the set C. But here I've passed three again and three has been added just once and it's not been repeated again. This is because sets contain unique elements and there is no second copy of one element present in a set. So I hope you've understood how to add elements to a set. Now let's move on to understand how you can remove elements from a set. To remove elements from a set, you can make use of the remove, discard or the pop methods. The remove method takes one parameter which is the element to be removed from your set. Now in case that element is not present in the set, this method is going to throw an error. The question is, what if you're not sure if some element is present in your set or not? But you want to make sure that this element is not present and your program does not throw an error. In this case, you can use the discard method. The discard method takes one parameter, which is the element to be removed. And in case that element is not present in the set, this method will not throw any error. Now moving on towards the pop function. The pop method removes a random element from your set. Now let's get back to our Jupyter notebook and use these methods. I'll reprint all the three sets over here. First, I will use the remove method. I've used the remove method and I've specified 2.4 to be removed from the set A. When I print the set A, 2.4 is no more present in my set. Now let me try to pass some value that is not present in the set A. When I use a.remove6, which is not present in the set A, it has thrown an key error and it's specified that 6 is the key which is not present in the set A. So I hope you've understood how to use the remove method. Now let's use the discard method and see what happens. When I used b.discard3, it has removed 3 from the set B. Now let's try to give some parameter to the discard method which is not present in set B. When I used b.discard90, it has executed but it has not thrown any error. So I hope you're clear with both these methods. Now let's try to use the pop method. When I used a.pop, it has popped some random value from the set A and it has returned it as the output over here. One is no more present in the set A. So I hope you're clear with how to add and remove elements from a set. Now let's move on to our presentation and see how you can find the union of sets. Union of sets refers to the concatenation of two or more sets into a single set. But in case you have any common values in these sets, the resulting set will contain just one copy of the common element. 
You can perform the union operation in two ways. One is using the pipeline symbol and the second is using the union method. I have a small example where I've created a set A and B and then I've used the pipeline symbol and the union method to find the union of these two sets. Let's go to our Jupyter notebook and see how this works. I'll reprint my sets A, B, C over here. I've used the pipeline symbol to find the union of A and B. All the elements that are present in A and B has been returned as a new set which is the union of A and B. But the common element are just printed once. Now let's see how to use the union method to perform this operation. I've used the union method to find the union of A and B. Now let's try to find the union of three sets using both these methods. As you can see in the output, I've used the pipeline symbol to find the union of three sets and then I've used the union method to find the union of A, B and C. So I hope you're clear with this. Now let's get back and see what is intersection of sets. The intersection of two or more sets is the formation of a new set consisting only of the common elements that are present in all these sets. You can perform this operation in two ways. One is using the ampersand symbol and the second is to use the intersection function. I'll be showing you all how exactly to do this on our Jupyter notebook. I've used the ampersand symbol to find the union of A and B. And you can see over here the elements that are common between the set A and B are 4 and ABC. Hence the output. Now let's try to use the intersection function. I've determined the intersection of A, B and C using the intersection function and the resultant is a string which is present in all these sets. So I hope you're clear with both these methods. Now let's get back to our presentation and see what is the difference of sets. The difference of sets produces a new set which contains all the elements that are present in one set except the common elements. To make you all understand this concept clearly, let me jump on to my Jupyter notebook. To find the difference of set, you can use either the minus symbol or the difference method. First over here, I'll be using the minus symbol. When I found the difference of A minus B, I've got all the elements that are present in A, but not the common elements of A and B. When I used B minus A, a set has been returned which contains all the elements of B except the common elements of B and A. So I hope you're clear with what is the difference of sets. Now let's use the difference method to do the same. I've used the difference method to find A minus C. And as you can see, all the elements present in A but not the common elements of A and C have been returned as my output. You can use the difference method to find the difference of three sets as well. When I found the difference of A minus B minus C using the difference method, only one element has been returned which is present in A and not present in B and C. Hope you're clear with this. Now let's move on towards our final topic of this session, which is the concept of a frozen set. A frozen set is a set whose values cannot be modified, which means when you freeze a set, it becomes immutable. To create frozen sets in Python, you can use the frozen set method. As you all know, I've created a set A. Just make a note guys that you cannot add or remove values from a frozen set. As you all know, I've created a set A, which is a normal set and I've been using it to add and remove values from it. Now let's freeze this set. I've created a new set D, which is a frozen set and I've supplied the values of A as a parameter to this frozen set constructor. Now let's see what happens if I try to add some values to this frozen set. When I used d.add3, it has returned an attribute error, which says frozen set object has no attribute add. Therefore, frozen sets are immutable and you cannot change the values present in the frozen set. Frozen set helps to serve as a key in a dictionary. 
So I hope you're clear with all that's been covered in this session today. So guys, this was our last topic of this session. I hope you've enjoyed and learned something new. Please make sure to practice as much as possible. And if you have any suggestions or queries, please do let me know in the comment section and I will revert to you at the earliest. Goodbye and take care.